Welcome to the Two Ton Nerds. As always, my name is Max James, and coming from a new location down in the basement, in this episode of the TTN Presents, I'll be talking about my month-long quest to watch 30 new movies way back in June. Now, with I know it's September, but with everything going on with life and work and going on vacation, just finally sitting down or standing up in front of the camera and talking about movies is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. So, and what better way to do it with this video with me talking about 30 new movies. Now, I'm only going to be talking about 10 of them, my top 5 favorites and my top 5 least favorites. Now, to save me and you some time, I'm just going to scroll up the list of movies that I've watched Star Wars style. <laughs> Now, I know there's only 27 movies on that list, but since three of them are TV shows and by Max's logic, all those episodes equals up to at least three or four days of content. So, um, now I'm just going to jump right into telling you my top five favorites. Um, at number five is Deadpool 2. I got to see this in theaters, and it was just a lot of fun. It was just... I was laughing loudest at a few of the jokes, especially correcting the timeline post-credit sequence, and um, at especially the James Bond-esque title sequence. That was just amazing to me, because I am a big James Bond fan, so that really got me cheesing at the screen. But at number four is Annihilation. It was a... That was a good sci-fi movie that I've been wanting to watch for uh, quite some time after seeing the previews for it. And it stars Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac. It's about this all-female science crew going to this um, this t this uh, area, area called the Shimmer. And everything's starting to mutate. And... I can't really dive more into that because it's going to just start getting into spoiler territory, but I highly recommend it. Uh, number three is The Game, directed by David Fincher. Now, uh, this was the last of the David Fincher movies that I finally haven't got to see, and I finally got to see it because it finally got added to the streaming services. I know I could have rented it, but I... Loved it. It was very good. It has Michael Douglas, Sean Penn. Uh, Michael Douglas's character gets a birthday gift from his younger brother, Sean Penn. And throughout the movie, his life just starts getting turned upside down, left, right. He doesn't know who to trust, who to trust. It just, everything is just going everywhere. And he's trying to solve this mystery. And it's fantastic. Number two is Please Stand By. Now... This one really hit at, at the heartstrings because tugged at the heartstrings because it has a lot of nerd um, content in it due to its um, the heart and soul of it is Star Trek because it's about this girl who has this um, mental um, handicap where she can't quite function by herself. And she's constantly needing someone there to kind of help her move in the right direction. She can function, but she just kind of needs someone to be there. So she then she starts kind of falling. She found Star Trek, and she just starts learning everything you need to know about Star Trek. And it's fantastic because throughout the movie, she enters this star trek script contest and she missed the deadline to send it in through mail so she goes on a road trip to hand it to hand deliver it and just a lot of problems ensues and it's kind of slowly helping her develop a little bit better to be on her own and able to handle the outside world just a little bit better and i really love this movie it's not just because of the the star trek content but it, it's just it's a great movie and I really like these low-budget movies that are um, just, you can tell it's just a good premise. 
and number one, one best pitcher at the Oscars is Shape of Water. It was just, I really dig the style, the art style, the way it was told. Um, I know this movie was more famous for she has sex with a fish in the movie, but you, it's more than that. It's way, way, way more than that. It is, it is a great piece of storytelling. And I, it's about this girl who is mute, and she's communicating with this um, uh, fish man, basically, through sign language. And they start to form a bond because they're both kind of outsiders. And it is just amazing. I, I can't, I don't want to, and it has Michael Shannon in it. He's a great villain in this movie. Now for the fun. The top worst. Now, number five is how to plan an orgy in a small town. Now, I was very disappointed in this one because I wanted it to, to be more like um, a good old-fashioned orgy. Um, has like Jason Sudeikis and Tyler LeBane and um, a few others that you'll recognize right off the bat. But it, that, I really liked that one a lot better because I think this one tried to take itself too serious. While the other one was just going for straight jokes. And that's kind of why I like the other one, other one a little better. Uh, number four is Ghost in the Shell with Scarlett Johansson. This one just couldn't keep my attention. It I was had high hopes for it. But it plain and simple, it just couldn't keep me interested in it. I was constantly looking away. Um, so that's why. Number three, this is probably the most disappointing one. Um, Justice League gods and monsters i am so big fan of the um dc animated stuff uh but this one to me was just it just fell short it just like once like with a um, ghost in the shell it just couldn't keep me interested number two cabin fever the remake this was so beyond unnecessary the only thing that this movie improved upon on the original was that it looked better it was better filming uh, better cinematography that is but it follows the same beats and i think there's a couple twists on the thing on the from the original but it basically plays the exact same way it was so unnecessary and number one evil bong 777 i've watched six other ones i had to watch the number seven and my takeaway from this movie was I think it was just an excuse to get women naked in the movie and have sex with a ginger ginger weed man. That's it. That's exactly what this movie is. It's I I can't explain it any better than this. Uh, you have to I can't. It's number 1. I had to watch it cuz I like I said I watched the previous 6 movies. I have this movie clocks in just a little over an hour, <laughs> but it's about the only thing that even has an evil bong in it anymore. They go to sexy land or sexy hell, and it's uh, I don't know, it's terrible. It, it like I said, it is literally just an excuse to get women naked in the movie. That's it. And at one point, the, one of them has sex with a puppet that looks like uh it's so with a ginger weed man a little ginger bread man made out of weed it is terrible uh but i like the full moon movies they are so much fun to watch just because they provide a good amount of entertainment in a bad but good way so that's my quest to watch 30 new movies through the month of june in september <laughs> Um, as always, my name is Max James, and I will be doing the 30 month, 31 Days of Fright Horror Movie Project next month, which I'll be watching 31 horror movies, and keeping with the theme of the previous movie, I'll be watching B-Movie Trash. So, as always, my name is Max James, and I'm going to go geek out. <laughs>